Now, we're going to talk about a little bit more practical side, what you can do, what you can do. There are something you cannot do, but other than that, you are feel free to do anything as long as you are following uh, the principle. So let's talk about something that you cannot do when you do the resolution. One, only lone pairs of electrons or the part of the multiple bonds can move. Not the electrons making a single bond, they don't make the resonance structures. So for instance, you have a bond, a single bond, a bond, means that a pair of electrons are shared between those two particles. It's a maybe the electron. Can we move the electron to make a resonance structures like that? And my answer is big no. You don't break the single bond by making a resonance structures. Because a carbon carbon single bond is very stable, it's going to take us so much energy to break it. Resonance structures just ambiguity of the position of the electrons is not breaking the molecule. So even though that single bonds are made with electrons, you're not moving that. That is a big no. What if, what if you have a positive charges, like the example we just saw in the last slide, is here, then can you move these electrons over there so you make a double bonds and then positive charges move over there? And my answer is still no. The reason is you're breaking single bonds. It's a huge penalty you have to pay, pay for it. And that is not going to be what's happening uh, with like just freely moving around. So single bond, no matter what, they don't break. Number two, something that you cannot do. We are still talking about the quorum in the second row. What it means is electrons are going to be filled in the first shell, which is the one SO2, and the second shell, which is the balance shell. That's made of the two SO2 and two pure. Combined up, our shells can only have an eight electron in total, which makes some rule called the octet rule. You cannot violate that. Carbon do not want to have an eight electrons in the outer shell. No more than eight. It makes a carbon very unstable if you give them more. Just one more, you may think that. No, it's a huge deal for the carbon. They don't want to have no more than an eight. All the elements in the second row, you don't break an octet. So for instance, this is an oxygen having a lone pair. We talk about the position of the electrons in the lone pair and of the multiple bonds can move around. This is a lone pair. So this is something that we can move. And then let's say this comes in between the carbon and oxygen. So now this carbon and oxygen are already sharing a two pairs of electrons. That makes double bonds. If this one's going to come in, it's going to make a three pairs of electron share. If you draw the structures in the paper, you can draw anything. Even the novel, you can still find the shape, but does time it exist? So it doesn't. The structures not possible, all because when you do this, you make this carbon. How many bonds this carbon has? Five bond carbon. Whenever I see five bond carbon, I'm not going to say anything else. I'm just going to cross it with the red mark and wrong. Because there's no way, there's no way carbon can have a five bond. You only have a maximum four bond. So that's the octet rule. You just make the carbon get an extra two more electrons, and then the three third shell, that makes a carbon really, really, really unstable. So that's the reason you don't violate the top of the table. Other than that, only the two things you cannot do. Other than that, anything is possible. So doing retinal structures in a way, it's a nightmare because you've got to look for the possibility of this can this happen, can that happen? Does it violate the rules? Every single one of them. And you just have to keep checking things out. You know, any answer is actually something that's a most difficult answer, right? So anyway, well, that's why we're going to go over several examples. I'm trying to give a sense that what we can do, what we can do. And after that, I hope that you get some sense out of it.
Uh, it will give even give two rule. You just talk about just two rule. And then there's some other factors come in, which we'll discuss a little bit later. But anyway, let's look at these two examples you just talked about. One, this oxygen has a lone pair. Lone pair can be two. Can this lone pair on oxygen move in between the carbon and oxygen? If that happens, you're going to make this carbon independent. But that is not possible. You are violating the octet rule. In order to make the electron move to the directions, this carbon should be able to accept, right? There got to be electron deficiency there. If they're full, because this carbon has already already have eight electron development. One, two, three, four bonds. So eight electrons already in the balance shell. This is a full, is maximum occupied. And then you are adding two more. So that's what makes a 10 electron program in really bad situations. And then that's the why these things are not happening unless you are making that vacancy on that program. Are you going to create the vacancy? It's not you creating it, but reaction created. But let's say we take this hydrogens away. Now, when we take the hydrogens away, that hydrogen goes out with a two electron. What that means, this carbon now is a possibly charge it. How many outer shell electrons and this carbon has? One, two, three bonds. So only have a six electrons in the balance. So this lone pair can go between these two because if you do that, this carbon has an eight electrons. We're not violating the fact, actually, we are fulfilling the octet rule. So that is better. So that's why these lone pairs sitting on the positive. Not 100%, they're going to be existing this way. Not 100%, they're going to be existing that way. It's going to be some proportion between these two, where it's going to be, but it's not going to be somewhere in between. Neither is I actual structures. Anyway, so what that means is this carbon oxygen single bond you see here is not going to be single bond in actual you know, structures. It's not going to be the double bond, but it's going to be somewhere in between. It could be 1.7 bond, 1.8 bond. But the thing is that we cannot talk about that with the plants and restaurant structure kind of simplify. Yeah, something the real is in between of those two extremes. So, but in this case, yes, resonance structures can be drawn. After that, right? All right. Let's go over. Anyway, so let's just continue. Look at this example here. We got multiple bonds, carbon oxygen double bonds, and carbon carbon double bond. As, as I said, single body carbon is not going to have a lone pair, any electron to move it around, right? So only the double bonds or triple bonds or the lone pairs and tetraions, those are something that can move around. And then let's say these double bonds. Double bond can be different places as we talked about. So let's talk about these double bonds move in between those two. Can that be possible? Can you do that? This is not possible. This movement just alone is not possible because if you're counting this carbon after this bond move, that's going to be two, two, and one bond, so that's a five on the orbit. You cannot do that. Does it mean this electron never going into that direction? That they still can, but they're not creating this bond. You've got to be thinking about what else can happen to make the electron move in this direction. Moving electron in this direction, you're going to make this carbon with a 10 electron. So what we can do after that what if one of these electrons goes to an oxygen? So two pairs of electrons are synchronized when they're moving together. So when these ones are coming in, 
you cannot just move it along, but that comes in along with the these electron pairs going up, then you can draw the resonance structures. All the paired electrons in the structures, they can be connected and moving together. That's possible. Because if you do this way, yes, you're going to create double bonds. This double bond becomes a single bond by moving one of the electron pairs going to the oxygen as a lone pair. So how many lone pairs this oxygen has? It's a negative charge with oxygen. Well, let me first ask this. How many lone pairs does that oxygen have? Two pairs, of electric, two pairs of lone pairs are on the oxygen. It gets another one. So how many lone pairs are on that oxygen? It has two. It just got one in. So the total three, right? So that's why it's negatively charged. And these two pairs of electrons are moving together and they're making a resonance structure like this completely allowed. So you just cannot do this alone. You have to think about moving that together. Then you can do the, the correct resonance structures. All right. These are something that you really have to practice a lot. Let me just talk about the significance of the resonance structures, why we care the most. This is an example I'm pretty sure you know. That molecule is called acetic acid. Acetic acid is a, is a base, it's a component of the vinegar that makes it sour thing because it's an acid, acid based sour. Acetic acid, if you drop it in the water, you already know this thing, it follows the ion. Right? This proton goes out, and then you are forming carboxylate, which is a negatively charged species. And then that proton comes out easy. In these structures, it's a solid state. How if oxygen is going to be negatively charged? But even though oxygen is a high negative atom, if you just want to give oxygen or electron pairs and make it negatively charge it, they're not happy. It's almost like it's a hot potato. You toss the potato there and then you can hold it, but if you're holding it just you alone for the whole 100% of the time, your hand is going to hurt. But what if you got a buddy and you can just simply just toss it around? Then it's possible, right? So this is kind of situation. Oxygen is negatively charged. It's a, normally a bad thing, does normally happen spontaneously. But in this case, if that arises, that negatively charged oxygen doesn't have to be stay on that oxygen. That lone pairs are coming in, making a polymer oxygen double bond. Not only that, one of these double bonds has to go out as a lone pair of the other oxygen. That's the resonance structure they can create. What this resonance structure means? Negative charges are going to be spread between those two oxygens. Not 100% sitting on that oxygen, it could be sitting on the other oxygens. They're sharing 50%, 50%. So bearing those of trouble alone makes it stressful, but if you share it with the body, makes it reasonably possible. So that's the reason this proton can go out and then this molecule becomes acidic. If there's a low resonance stabilization as possible, vinegar is not going to be sour. But we all know the vinegar is sour. It's all because it's acidic. Why that molecule becomes acidic? When the proton goes out, what's left behind is a reasonably stable. And they're stable because of the chemical resonance structures. So that's how things all relate to the resonance structure. We're going to use a resonance structure to talk about the stability, of the reactive intermediates most of the time, that determines the state of the reaction, the of the molecule. So that's why these things are very significant for concept. Anyway, that's the physical meaning. There are some other things we need to talk about, which is uh, the resonance structures. You can draw the all people different resonance structures. Does all of them have the same significance? No, they do not. So that's kind of what we need to talk about major and minor contributors. So this is a carbonyl, the carbon oxygen and the double bond. This double bond is a two pairs of electrons shared between the carbon and oxygen. So as we talked about, we're not breaking a single bond, but these electron pairs in a double bond, 
they can move around if they can. So these pair of electrons, let's say that these move up to the oxygen. Then what that means is now this becomes a single bond. Now the oxygen gets the three pairs of electrons there. That makes oxygen negative to charge it. And then this carbon, on the other hand, is a deficient of electron. That's why this is going to be only have a fixed electrons, and that's going to be possibly charge it. Is this resonance structure valid? Yeah, they are valid, even though this is not as stable as the other one. Then you give the two reason why is that resonance structure is less stable. One, if you look at that, oxygen negatively charged, yeah, that's also trouble. But if you think about how many electrons in the outer shells of an oxygen, well, eight. Hey, we're not violating octet rule by this movement of electrons. This oxygen still have an eight electron valence shell. But what about that carbon? How many electrons on that carbon? In the valence shells, it only have a six electrons. And carbon with the six electrons is not as stable as a carbon with any electron. Actually, it's much, much less stable. So that possible charging carbon, that octet field, is a problem. That's the reason why this was less stable than the other one. That's the first reason. Second reason is the charge separation. You got you make an option they the charge. Right, you just give electrons 100% to the oxygens, which is uh, basically the same thing we just talked about. Yeah, oxygen can have a negative charge better than other elements. Still, it's kind of a, a little bit stressful for the core oxygen and adapt to electrons 100% around, around it. So, charge separations are normally is not really good for the stability of the molecule. And by the main reason is that this carbon not octet field. That's the reason. Between these resonance structures, even though this was a valid resonance structures, this is a less stable compared to that. So we call these more stable forms of the resonance structures are major contributors. These the less stable forms of resonance structures are minor contributors. So this is a major form, that's a minor form. How much minor, how much major is something that we're not going to discuss because then you have to ask, I think when I have to estimate. Uh, let's say 90%, 10%, just for the argument's sake. 90% exists this way, 10% exists that way. Or even less than 10%. And truly, in fact, if I know the value, this is almost like a 99.999% that way, and then 0.0001% this way. It's a very small fraction of existing this way, that majority is staying that form. If it's such a negligible amount, then why do we need to talk about the mining? The major contributors are basically saying what the structure should look like, but why do we care about the minor contributors? The reason why we need to do it is minor contributors, even though it's only a small fraction does it to stay, stay in that form, it explains the property of the molecule. What do you see in this form between, uh, compared to that? You see the charge separation between the oxygen and carbon. It's a positive charge in carbon, electric, the carbon becomes electric efficient, oxygen becomes electric rich. I mean, that is almost imaginable because if you have carbon bound with an oxygen, oxygen is a more electric negative, it's a pulling electron from the carbon to its own side. So oxygen is supposed to have a more electric density than the carbon. So it's kind of a very easy to understand why the carbon normally lose electric density to the oxygen. But these red minor contributors are basically pointed out, yes, this carbon becomes electron efficient and then oxygen becomes electron rich. You know, that will be explaining why this molecule have a dipole. Dipole is a charge separated in a small distance and that work that can be measured. So the minor contributors explaining some of the things of what the whole molecule actually has as a property. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later for some other examples, but that's why you should be able to draw the resonance structures. You should be able to decide what's major, what's minor, right? And those are the two things you should be able to do for any examples. That will be your opponent today. Anyway, moving on. There are a few things that we should still talk about. I'm pretty sure some of you caught this, 
But why are we moving electron only to this direction? Why are we are moving electron to the oxygen? Why not this going down to the polar? Why are we not talking about both possibility equally? Why do we talk about this way? Why not the other way? Uh, because maybe the other way is not possible. The uh, octet is already uh, built for the carbon, so we have 10 of that on Exactly. What I'm trying to point out is whatever you try to do, you don't want to violate the rule of nature, right? Time doesn't go backward. Even though some of the movie talks about it, which talks about it's a fancy concept, at least I can get younger me and pointing out that you should go this way at the other way. It's not possible. If you drop the ball on Earth, it goes down. It does not go up, right? Space shape has to propel something very hard to the ground so they can go up. They don't magically just float around, right? Some of the reality we cannot escape from. If you make this electron go to the carbon, as I said, it's not a problem for the carbon. Carbon still have eight electrons. Oxygen has less octanal field. The same situation between these two, but it's not the same as the other one. If you think about that, natural affinity of the electron. Oxygen is a more inflammatory than carbon. Which one gets electron more? Oxygen. If you want to give it, if you better give it to oxygen, not to the carbon. That is almost imagining time go backward, or if you drop the ball, it goes to the sky, rather than falling down to the ground. This is not following the rule of reality. Even though you can draw anything on paper, 